What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp quick tip video for you. So in this series, I'm highlighting tips that come from the SketchUp Essentials course. As many of you know, the SketchUp Essentials course is my course where I really get in-depth teaching you how to use SketchUp. So it's a start to finish, step-by-step -step instruction on SketchUp to really teach you how to take your SketchUp modeling to the next level. So we start with the basics and we work through more advanced concepts in 11 modules over 14 hours of instruction on SketchUp. So if that's something you're interested in, you really want to take your SketchUp modeling to the next level, you can check that out at the sketchupessentials.com slash course. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so we're going to start with the simple concepts and move into more complex ones. And I will add the timestamps in the bar down below if you want to find different tips really quickly. So tip one is very simple, um, and it's just using the shift key in order to select multiple different objects. So for example, let's say that I have this object and I want to select multiple different edges on it like this well you can hold the shift key in order to um, go into add or subtract mode in order to add or subtract things to your selection so that not only works for individual faces and um, edges but it also works for objects so in this case for example these objects are grouped well if I do a shift click I can select or deselect these just by holding down the shift key and clicking on them. So that's a really simple way to add things to your selections. All right, so tip two is the activity that occurs when you double click or triple click. So when you wanna select a face on an object, so let's say we wanted to select this top face right here and all the connected edges, what you can do is you can double click on that face. So notice how when I single click, it just selects an individual object. If I double click, it selects the connected geometry. So like all of the edges on the outside of this face. Notice how if I come in here and double click on the individual faces, what it's doing is it's selecting the edges associated with those faces in addition to the face. Um, however, there's also another way to select things where you triple click. And so if you triple click, so if I was to triple click on this box, for example, notice how all my connected geometry gets selected. So same thing for this shape. If I was to triple click on it, notice how all of the connected faces will be selected as a part of that. Now that can get really useful if let's say for example that I had a smaller box connected to this object and I needed to select everything. So I could definitely come in here and drag a box across this, but if you want to be really fast, you can just triple click and all of that's going to be selected automatically. And so notice how this will not select groups that are touching the object. So if I was to triple click now, notice how the geometry gets selected, but groups are not selected. Or you can't use the triple click to select uh, connected groups because they're not connected. That's not the way that objects inside of SketchUp work. All right, so tip three. The direction that you drag your selection box is going to affect what's selected. So um, I think everyone kind of knows that with the select tool active, you can click and drag in order to select objects. But you might have noticed that sometimes this acts a little different depending on what way you drag. And so, for example, when you drag from left to right like this, so if I click and drag from left to right and I move this into the middle of this box, right here. Well, notice how the only thing that gets selected is this box on this side. So the reason for that is because that's just standard selection mode. And what it means is anything that's completely inside of the box will get selected. So um, notice how even though I'm dragging this into additional boxes over here, this geometry isn't really being selected on the outside. So on the other hand, if you do this the other way, so if you drag from right to left, then this box, notice how it's dotted? Well, that box is going to select anything that touches the box. So if I was to click and drag into the middle of the box here, notice how you're getting these additional faces in here as well. That's because anything touching a right to left crossing box will be selected. So notice how I can use this in order to select more objects. And this also works with groups. So let's say we we're to bring something in. So let's bring in some bench objects like this. So let's say we have three bench objects and let's say we wanted to select one of them. Well, what I could do is I could drag a box all the way across it like this. Well, notice how just this bench is being picked up. If I was to drag a box across here and touch this one, notice how it's not being picked up in my left to right selection. However, if I was to click and drag from the other direction, notice how neither one of these is fully within the box 
yet if I let up on my mouse, it's going to select all the objects that the box was touching. So just be familiar with the differences between left to right and right to left crossing selections, because that's going to make a big difference in the way that you can um, in the way that you can select different things inside of SketchUp. All right, so with this next tip, let's turn our hidden geometry on. So I'm going to go to View Hidden Geometry. So what I have here is I have a sphere. And so let's say as a part of the sphere, I wanted to delete out some of the hidden geometry in here. Well, one of the problems with this is notice how even if I look at this straight on, it's really difficult to select geometry just straight on. Like say I wanted this full row, well notice how because we're in perspective mode, that box that I used in order to try to select this picked up more geometry than just the single row. Well that's because of the perspective and the way that this is being drawn off into the background. However, if you really wanted to just get in here and just select this based on a straight up and down view, what you can do is you can swap over into parallel projection mode. What parallel projection mode does is parallel projection mode turns the perspective off. So now, if you were to look at the perspective lines of this, they would run parallel rather than to a vanishing point. Well, what that means is that means if I go to front view, I get a true straight up and down view. Well, now I can come in here and drag a crossing selection across each one of these like this, and I don't have to worry about accidentally picking up that back line because we're not in perspective mode. So because of that, notice how I can fly around and see that I have a perfect selection in here. And then from there, if you wanted to delete that out or do whatever it is you wanted to do, you could do that really easily. So orthographic views are really gonna help you both from a straight on and a top down view to make sure that you're really getting the selections that you want. All right, so tip five is inverting your selection. And so one of the things you might have noticed is when you select objects inside of SketchUp and you drag a box across them, so let's say, for example, that I was to double click and pick up these faces and edges like this. So just these particular faces and edges. Well, now if I hold the shift key and drag a selection box across here, notice how it's going to deselect what I have selected. It's going to select what I didn't have selected. So what that means is that means that now I could delete out everything except those shapes um, because I could select them by inverting the selection just like that. So another way that you could use this is you could also, for example, select this object right here. Notice how I only have a single face selected, right? This says surface, and it shows that I have the surface selected. Well, now if I was to turn hidden geometry on by going to view hidden geometry, and I was to hold the shift key and click and drag across this, what that's going to do is that's going to select all of the edges in here and none of the faces. Well, then I could come in here and unsoften those edges. Then I could hold the shift key, drag it across again, and I could delete out all of the faces. So this is a good way to get like a wireframe or something like that. So by inverting your selection, you can do a lot of quick selection things that you couldn't do otherwise. All right, so next, you can modify the way the selection tool works by holding the shift key or the control key or the shift and control key. So we already know that if we were to click and drag across this object like this, right? So we were to select this whole thing, it's gonna select objects. Well, what if you wanted to add things without subtracting from the selection? Well, you can do that by holding the control key with the selection tool active. So notice how when I do that, I get a little plus next to my mouse cursor. Well, now I'm only going to be able to add to my selection. It's not gonna remove anything from my selection. So notice how when I do this, these objects aren't getting deselected. So in the same way, I could hold shift and control to do a subtraction only selection. So if I was to go straight up and down, do a shift control, click and drag across here, notice how it's only going to subtract objects, not add them. So if you're ever at a point where you just need to add things to a selection without having that selection inversion remove things, then you can hold the shift or control keys in order to, uh, in order to adjust the way that that's going to act. All right, so tip six is a built-in selection tool inside of SketchUp. And so what this one does is, let's say you wanted to select all of the objects with a single material associated with it. So let's say all kind of this red color. Well, if you right click, 
on this object, there's an option in here for select. Well, when we click on select, notice how there's options in here for different kinds of selections. So we can select the bounding edges, the connected edges, or the one I'm paying attention to, which is all with same material. And so what that's gonna do is that's gonna come in here and that's gonna select all of the objects that have this material associated with them. So that can be really great for selecting something and then like replacing it with a different color. So let's say I wanted this to be kind of a reddish color. Notice how everything that's selected gets a different color applied to it. So you can use this to really quickly select different materials. So right click, select all the same material and make adjustments to those. All right, so tip eight is not only can you select objects inside of your model by clicking on them, you can also select objects by going into the outliner. So if you remember the outliner is the tool inside of SketchUp that allows you to keep everything organized, right? All of your different groups are going to show up inside of the outliner. So let's say for example, that I wanted to pick up all of these bike racks really quickly. Well, I could do that by coming in here and doing a shift click and selecting them individually, but it would be a lot faster if these were all just grouped by name. Well, the outliner groups everything alphabetically so what that means is that means that I can come in here even with all the other objects in my model and I could just click and then I can do a shift click in order to select those different instances inside of my model. You can use the outliner to select different objects really quickly inside of SketchUp. All right, so tip nine is toggling into x-ray mode to seeing what you have selected. So inside of the scenes toolbar, there's an option in here to go into x-ray mode. And so what that's gonna do is that's gonna let you see what you actually have selected. So let's say I was to come in here and try to select these faces. Well, right now it looks like I just have these faces selected, but I have a number of columns inside of here and I can't even see which ones were selected um, because they're being blocked by the faces. However, if you were to jump over here into x-ray mode, you can see how this, all, this turns all of your faces inside of your model transparent. So you can see exactly what you have selected even though you have faces blocking those. So a really quick way to check what you have selected is just to toggle into x-ray mode and then toggle it back off. So it's a great way to check to make sure you don't have backside geometry turned on, other things like that. So that's gonna help you know exactly what you have selected. And then finally, my final tip is if you're using the desktop version of SketchUp, use extensions. So as many of you know, extensions really kind of expand the functionality of SketchUp. And there's a few that I pretty much always have installed just because they make my life a lot easier. So the first is Selection Toys. And these are all free, by the way. I will link to them in the notes down below. Um, selection Toys is an extension from TomTom Tom that allows you to modify your selections. So let's say, for example, that I wanted to take this cylinder and I only wanted to select the edges. So if you were to select all of this, right click and go down to Select Only, only. Notice how there's options in here to select only edges, only faces, text, curves, lots of different things. It's basically a set of filters for your selections. But let's say, for example, that I wanted to take all the softened edges in here and make them or make them uh, real geometry. So what I could do is I could select only my soft edges. Well, then I can come in here and I can make them not soft edges. Then I could select the whole thing, right click and select only my faces and I could delete them out. So notice how this really quickly allows you to filter out your different selections. So that, that is a great tool. Um, I recommend everyone has that one installed. So another one that's really great is called Selection Memory from TomTom. Tom. I will link to that in the notes down below as well. But if you've ever come through and like selected a whole bunch of different things and then accidentally clicked off of it after you've been like doing this whole thing, right? So let's say you wanted to select all the way out here and then you accidentally clicked off of it and you lost the whole selection. Well, selection memory saves your previous selection states. So if you go to edit, cycle previous selections, what that's gonna do is that's gonna let you cycle through the previous selections that you had so you can get that selection back without having to go in and click everything again. So that's a great one, it's free in the extension warehouse. And then the last one that I really like is inside of an extension called Sketch UV, which is also available for free in the extension warehouse. And it has a tool called the Path Select Tool. What the Path Select Tool does is it creates a smart, selection along a path. So what it does is it tries to figure out the fastest way between a couple different points 
inside of your model. So notice how I can use this in order to really quickly create a selection along these points inside of the tool. And I can mark different edges, I can add to the selection, I can do a lot of different things. So this is really great for selecting complex paths inside of SketchUp. All right, so if you wanna learn more about SketchUp, you wanna get that start to finish instruction, you can get more great tips like this inside of the SketchUp Essentials course at the sketchupessentials.com slash course. So if you're ready to really take your SketchUp modeling to the next level, make sure you check that out today. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.